Hi, my name is Christy Burton, and I'm a research associate working at the Hospital for Sick Children. And I'm going to talk to you today about what we know about the genetics of obsessive compulsive disorder. And this material comes from a review that's forthcoming in a PGC issue of Psychological Medicine. And so I'm presenting today on behalf of my co-authors who are listed below. Uh, OCD is a psychiatric disorder that's characterized by obsessions, which are intrusive and wanted distressing thoughts that cause a lot of anxiety and that often precipitate compulsions, which are uh, repeated or ritualized behaviors. Now, the nature of these obsessions and compulsions can vary a lot from person to person, so the presentation of OCD is quite heterogeneous. Uh, but we do know that symptoms tend to fall into clear factors, and the most common factor structure identified in meta-analysis is hoarding, symmetry, forbidden thoughts, and cleaning. OCD is also considered to be a common disorder, with a lifetime prevalence between 1 and 3%. It's also thought to be a brain-based disorder, with a lot of converging evidence coming from neuroimaging, genetics, and preclinical work, uh, and with an uh, cortical striothalamic circuit being one of the main um, pathophysiological mechanisms that's been implicated. In terms of the epidemiology of OCD, when we look at age of onset, there does seem to be two peaks in the distribution, one in childhood and the other in early adulthood. And we look at um, children with OCD, two thirds of cases tend to be boys, but the prevalence rates between males and females is about equal in adulthood. OCD also co-occurs with several psychiatric disorders, the most common being major depressive disorder, but also various anxiety disorders like generalized anxiety disorder, um, Tourette's, as well as anorexia and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. And there are several risk factors that have been associated with OCD. Obviously, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about genetics today, but there's also environmental factors like stressful life events, perinatal complication, childhood trauma, as well as infection in the case of pandas or pans. Now we're going to go over some of the key themes or messages that have come out of OCD genetic research to date. So first is that OCD is familial, and that's clearly illustrated in these pedigrees where we look at the green <clears throat> symbols which represent OCD phenotype. So a lot of clustering within families and across generations. And we look at the recurrence risk among first degree relatives. It can, it, some estimates are as high, excuse me, as 50%, but a lot uh, seem to cluster within the 10 to 20% range, which is considerable when we think of the prevalence of OCD in the general population. We also know that uh, genetics play an important role in OCD. So the concordance rate um, in dizygotic twins is consistently twice that of dizygotic or fraternal twins. And the heritability estimates from twin studies range between 27 and 65%, with slightly greater estimates found for childhood onset rather than adult onset OCD. Now, recent evidence from family studies um, provides further evidence for the additive genetic effect in OCD. And um, it, the effects coming from mothers tend to be genetic rather than environmental. So there's a lot of converging evidence coming from twin and family studies that implicate genetics as an important factor in the etiology of OCD. We also know that OCD is highly polygenic. So there is no one genetic variant for OCD. There's likely to be hundreds of thousands of genetic variants that are contributing to OCD risk. And a lot of this evidence comes from uh, genome-wide association studies. So the largest published GWAS of OCD to date comes from a meta-analysis of two large um, consortia, the IOCDF and OCGAS, and although, um, which are now part of the PGC OCD sample. And uh, although the study didn't identify any genome-wide significant variants, um, it, did it did identify variants that are in or close to genes that have previously been associated with OCD or involved in brain function. SNP, heritab SNP heritability estimates from this study were around 25%, which is consistent with previous studies. Um, and there is a very large uh, meta-analysis of OCD GWAS that's forthcoming from the PGC OCD group with some very promising results that hopefully will be um, published soon. There have also been two studies of um, 
two genome-wide association studies of obsessive compulsive traits and symptoms in the general population. And interestingly, both of them have identified genome-wide significant variants. The most recent, uh, which comes from the group that I work with, showing a genome-wide significant variant in PTPRD, a gene that's come up a few times in OCD genetic studies. And this particular variant was also associated with OCD diagnosis in independent samples. So there's definitely some converging evidence for, for this variant. Now what's interesting is when we look at the SNP heritability for um, OCD symptoms and traits, it does seem to be a bit lower than what we see for OCD diagnosis. And the reason for that's still unclear, although it does seem to occur in other disorders like ADHD. Um, and there's also a very large initiative within the PGC OCD group uh, to conduct a large uh, genome wide association study of OCD compulsive symptoms and traits, and that's currently ongoing. Now, there was some evidence uh, from a few years ago that suggested that the, a lot of the genetic effects from OCD was, were coming from common variants, but there is definitely evidence that rare variants also play a role in OCD. So when we look at rare copy number variants or CNVs, the very consistent finding is that there's no increased overall burden in rare CNVs for OCD. And this is quite different from what we see for other disorders like autism or schizophrenia. But there does seem, seem to be an increased number of rare CNVs in gene sets that are related to brain function or in genes that have previously been associated with neurodevelopmental disorders. And some of the CNVs that have been identified in CNV cases I include PTPRD, which again is coming up um, in findings, as well as BTBA9, uh, norexin 1, 16B1311. And there are still um, a lot of the CNV studies to date have been relatively small. And there's um, an, again, an initiative within the PGC OCD group to conduct a larger scale CNV study of OCD. Um, when we look at SNVs and indels, um, this research is still very much in its infancy as there are very few studies looking uh, using next generation sequencing in terms of OCD. Um, but one such recent study that conducted whole exome sequencing in a few hundred trios, really focusing on de novo variants, showed that de novo damaging variants were more common in OCD cases compared to controls. And that these damaging mutations uh, conferred risk for OCD in about 22% of cases. Now, we don't know how much risk they conferred in those cases. Um, and there's actually just a lot to be learned still in the rare variant space when it comes to OCD, um, especially as larger samples become available. Now, we also know that OCD dimensions have both shared and unique genetic risks. So a recent study um, in a large sample of twins looked at uh, the SNP heritability of compulsive symptoms versus obsessive symptoms. And compulsive symptoms had twice the SNP heritability of obsessive symptoms, although both were relatively low. And only compulsive symptoms were genetically correlated with uh, diagnosed OCD in the PGC sample, whereas obsessive symptoms were not at all. So there definitely seems to be some differences in the genetic architecture of those two very broad symptom types. Um, now, a slightly older twin study that looked at symptom dimensions in a, like the more typical factor structure broke down the genetic variants for each uh, dimension by the shared variants versus the unique variants. And even though supporting this previous twin study, there's definitely genetic variants that's unique to most of the symptom dimensions in OCD. There is a large proportion of the variants, the dark gray part of the bars, um, that is shared across the OCD dimensions. Now, one seemingly outlier here seems to be hoarding, and there is some, some growing evidence that hoarding may have slightly different genetic architecture, which supports um, the separation of hoarding into its own disorder in the DSM. But there's still a lot more to be investigated there. And again, there is a um, effort within the PGC OCD group to conduct some um, large-scale GWAS of hoarding. We also know that OCD seems to share genetic risk with conditions that it's comorbid with. So uh, these are results from two large studies that are pretty recent with very large samples and very similar results. So OCD does is genetically correlated with 
uh, disorders that it's commonly comorbid with, like uh, MDD and anxiety, but it's most genetically correlated with anorexia and Tourette's. And it does seem to form this compulsive behavior cluster in terms of genetics. So these results suggest that some of the phenotypic cor um, correlations that we're seeing for certain of OCD's comorbidities are driven by genetics, whereas others may be not as genetically driven. And finally, uh, we also know that risk for OCD seems to be shared quite a bit between males and females. So this is a study conducting a sex stratified, sex stratified analysis using PGC data. And um, as you can see, although there are no genome-wide significant variants, there's definitely peaks that are distinct between males and females. And in fact, in a gene-based analysis, there were two genes that were significant for OCD in females only. This was in GRID2 and GRP135. Um, so although there are some distinctions, when you look at the genetic correlations, they're extremely high. So <clears throat> there's definitely likely to be some sex-specific variants between males and females, but there is a large proportion of the genetic risk that is shared between the sexes. So just to summarize some of the, the key findings, OCD is familial and genetics plays an important role. OCD is highly polygenic with contributions from both common and rare variants. OCD dimensions have both shared and unique genetic risks. OCD shares genetic risks with some of its comorbid conditions like anorexia and Tourette's and genetic risk for OCD is shared between the sexes. So what are some of the implications of these, these findings? So I think first and foremost, um, there has been a lot of discovery, but we definitely need larger samples for GWAS and next generation sequencing to get more replicable findings and to better understand um, the genetic risks underlying OCD. Uh, it does seem important to look not only at OCD as a diagnosis, but also um, as a continuum and that we should be taking into account factors that we know um, are wrapped up in the genetics of OCD, like age of onset, sex, comorbidity, and symptom dimensions. Um, and that OCD comorbidity is driven at least in part by genetics. Now in terms of clinical implications, it's a little bit early days for that. So I know there's hope that genetic uh, information will be helpful as part of a diagnostic assessment at some point, although the extent of which that's going to be helpful is still unclear, but it's certainly much too early for that given the current results. And much larger samples are going to be required if we're going to get to that point. And hopefully emerging pharmacogenetics work, work, which I wasn't able to talk about today, will help to identify some novel therapeutics or um, people who are more uh, likely to be um, have therapeutics that are for, therapeutics that are successful for them. Um, and there is some um, evidence from glutamate work that has prompted the investigation of glutamate-based therapeutics for OCD. And I think there's still, this is a really exciting time to be in OCD. With growing samples and more momentum, there's going to be the opportunity to ask a lot of important questions that are still unanswered. And these are just a couple, um, but we can start to understand whether genetic risks are similar across ancestral groups, because right now there isn't a whole lot of diversity, and this is something that the PGC is actively trying to rectify currently. How do genetic factors affect treatment response? And this is something that the PGC OCD group is currently organizing itself to, to answer. Looking at which risk factors for OCD are causal, and hopefully when we get to big enough samples, we'll be able to use Mendelian randomization to answer some of those questions. Um, how do genetic and environmental fa uh, factors interact to affect risk? Uh, what role do epigenetics play? And there has been research in this area, I didn't have time to talk about it today, but getting larger and larger samples to have enough power to really understand the role of um, that particular type of genetic effect. Also starting to probe into that interesting relationship between sex and age of onset and how much genetics may or may not play a role in, the, in those, those patterns. And can we predict symptom presentation with genetics? And finally, how does shared genetics lead to comorbidity? 
what are the, the underlying common biological mechanisms there. So I think we've learned a lot in the last 10 years in terms of OCD genetics, and I think we're going to learn a lot more in the next 10, um, and there's a lot of exciting discoveries to come. So I just want to end by acknowledging uh, the TS OCD Working Group and the PGC more broadly for the opportunity. Thank you.